So I mentioned that uh, you know we had the personal story, and personal story happens a lot in instances. So here you'll see that the city of Divinity's Reach is a, like a big wheel with uh, six spokes, and each of in between the spokes is a district. Uh, here we have the Sama district, which is going to, for the humans, play the role of the home instance. The home instance is tied to your player. It will be set up to reflect the choices you made in your biography. But the home instance is a lot more than that. Um, it will really, you know, over time, the home instance will continue to change as in a reflection to how you played the choices you made in your personal story. As an example, um, you could be out later on adventuring and you save some people but their village was destroyed. They will then, those NPCs will then move into this home district and be neighbors of yours. Um, one of the choices that the humans have later on in the game is they have a choice, there's an orphanage and there's a hospital in here. And you have a choice to save one or the other, but not both. Depending on what you choose, there will be one ba burned out building and probably a lot of sad people standing around it and you know, the other one will be you know, upright and running. Uh, really, these are, the, you know, these are just examples of the kind of choices that you'll be making in your personal story that will be directly reflected in your home instance. So we'll go ahead and head into um, the tavern, I mean, where my friend Petra and her father are, are, running, you know, are running the joint. Now, if I went ahead and continued with the storyline, I would end up in a bar fight with some of the NPCs here and, and it would push me further down my personal story. Um, now if I had been, if I had chosen nobility when I was in bi the biography, uh, my friend Lord Farron would actually be throwing a banquet in my honor. And if I had chosen I was from the streets, I would be meeting up with my old, you know, my old childhood friend Quinn, who's in a little trouble with a street gang that we were both members of at one point. So at this point, for the purposes of time, we're going to go ahead and move over to the higher level uh, content for this demo. Uh, we'll be playing a char, which I, as I mentioned is a ferocious martial uh, you know, feline race that we have in Guild Wars 2. And we'll be going into a level 40 plus area called Blaze Ridge Steps. Blaze Ridge Steps is, um, for those of you who remember uh, Guild Wars, is you know, very much in the old geography of Ascalon. But the Char pretty much are the dominant race in Ascalon right now. And an elder dragon has flown across the Blazerid Steps area, corrupted many parts of it, and as a result, branded dragon minions are now moving up and down uh, and out of control. So where do we stand um, on the dragon at this point? Uh, I can find that. I was just showing you the branch there. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we just, can we just pour it over there? Yeah, you don't want to go look at other stuff? Yeah, let's just go pour it in there and see, find out the, the status there. So you'll notice before we head over there that now that we've moved into the high level content, we have a full set of the skill bar. Uh, and we're going to go over here. Yeah, this is something that we're doing uniquely for the demo, is there's an amazing dragon encounter that we want as many people to see as possible. So we put that little hook in there to allow people to teleport to it. So here, let me turn the volume down on this a little bit. It's going to get a little crazy soon. So we can talk about weapon swapping right now. I mentioned that we wanted to keep the UI as clean as possible, but we did want it to keep diversity in the things that you could do. So for example, what Matthew is showing here is weapon swapping between a longbow, ah, here's our dragon. But we don't have to engage him just yet. Um, is the longbow and uh, double axe. Go ahead and switch back to double axe. Double axe um, is a very high DPS uh, combination. Um, and it, everything from like axe strokes to the ever popular whirling axe, which basically sends him spinning around, causing all sorts of damage. And you know what? The first time I saw that, I said, that is a, that is a fun skill. If it, didn't have, you know, if it didn't have a cooldown on it, I would use it all the time. But that would be a little overpowered. Um, so go ahead and switch over to bow and show off some of the, the cool attacks you can have just with the bow. So one of the things that we did is with the, uh, is with the warriors, we wanted to give them more to do than just, you know, be the guy who holds the sword. So they're allowed to use weapons that you would normally think of would, or would be for other professions, but they're tailored specifically to the warrior. The warrior has different skills holding a bow than a ranger does. The warrior is tailored more to doing damage and less to doing some of that drawing and you know blinking from far away that a ranger does. So he's got a skill, he's got a skill like uh, rain of fire, which you'll notice. 
does a ridiculous amount of damage into one area. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the warrior feels like a warrior, while at the same time being versatile enough to use multiple weapon sets depending on mm -hmm. the situation. Yeah. So. Even from the, the, the great example of this fight is that not just us, but you can see everybody has very action oriented combat. Um, movement is important. Um, what Matthew is doing here is reviving somebody on the battlefield. And you'll see oftentimes it's not just one person who tries to do the reviving. A lot, so we've seen on the floor people in the, who are playing the demo, they like reviving other people. Okay. Do you want to see if we can get an elementalist to show off the cross profession combos? There we go. So here's an example of two professions comboing off each other. An elementalist just dropped a firewall, and Matthew just both shot arrows and used whirling axe through it and started sending off fireballs in all directions or, and lighting his arrows on fire. This is an example of kind of ad hoc tactics that people in our, you know, people in Guild Wars 2 can do where you don't have to be party together, you can just be, do, you know, using your individual skills, and if you're paying attention to what's going on in the battlefield, you can actually do have some great combat moments. Yeah, so what Matthew's gonna show off now is our, another example of an, our, what we call environmental weapons. Um, environmental weapons, go ahead and change your skill bar when you, you know, take them over. And here, he's got a mortar that's basically bombing these minions in the mid-level here. So before we tr we really try to take the shatterer down, do you want to show down down skills? Okay. So the other thing that's you know been rather controversial and interesting about our combat system is that when you get you know when you health bar goes to zero, uh, you are not immediately dead. You actually have a secondary bar that well that person just revived us. But what happens is you have some time left after you're down to keep you, uh, attacking. If you, if you defeat your attacker, you're gonna spring back up. Likewise, one of the skills he's got is uh, it will pop him back up for like 15, 20 seconds and then he'll just fall right down and he'll be defeated uh, unless someone comes down to revive him. We found that this is not only a fun mechanic, kind of last ditch uh, attempt to like get back up, but also it, it, it just keeps combat moving faster. Mm -hmm. And again, that's different for every professional. Mm -hmm. The down skills that you use, for example, when the warrior goes down, when the warrior goes down, his first skill is to throw a rock. His second skill is to rally the people around him to fight harder. His third skill is the one where he stands back up for 30 seconds before going completely out, exhausting his and keep reviving me. Whereas like the elementalist, the elementalist casts out electricity or causes the earth itself to reach up and grab opponents. Uh, in addition, with the waypoint system, even if you don't manage to take out an enemy and rally, even if you don't manage to get somebody else to come and save you because, you know, they're all busy with the fight or you're out on your own in some godforsaken area, you can go back to the nearest waypoint and come back to the thing just like you would be able to, even if you were alive. <coughs> well, I've just been told we have <coughs> five minutes left. So, um, I don't know that we'll be able to get the Shatterer down in five minutes. It, it'll be really close. But as you can see, the Shatterer is an impressive boss monster. He's very sophisticated. <laughs> Great. He has all sorts of different types of attacks. Uh, a, a team is going to have to be paying attention to what's going on to really take him down. Nevertheless, this is the kind of boss monster that other, other MMOs would put at the end of a really long instance raid or dungeon. And what we wanted to do is take encounters like him and bring him up to the world so that more people can experience it. In addition, this is the sort of event that we want to have affected by other events. So you notice that there are those uh, cannons that are up at the top. There are four of them. Two of them don't function all the time. In order to make sure that they have functioned, there's an event chain that leads up to this. So you'll need to make sure that you escort the people to a certain area. You'll need to make sure that you hold down the area and keep it clear while they repair the cannons. Otherwise, this fight is going to be a lot harder because those cannons do a lot of damage against the dragon. And so we want to make sure that even during a boss fight, it's because of the way people have interacted with the world that determines how that boss fight will go. You'll notice that there will be other events uh, that where there will be NPCs around. 
you are all down because the monsters have swept in and wiped them out, and you can revive them or not. You can be a total solo badass. I think we can tip the I think we can tip the balance on this one if you get in there and start right, DPSing, man. Stop talking. <laughs> We're really close. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think we're gonna do it. There we go. And now we'll find out why he's called the Shatterer. <laughs> But that succeeded. And of course, giant dragon chest. There you go. The dragon jacket, you know, because it's all about the loot. And because we participate in it, everyone who participate, participate in the event will get an opportunity to interact with the, the, the dragon chest. So, pretty much, I guess that's our demo uh, with the time we have. Uh, we hope that you saw some things here that, you know, make you understand why we're so excited about Guild Wars 2 and the things we're trying to do with MMO gameplay.